If you're looking to scale your Amazon business from zero to 100,000 in just four months, you're going to want to watch this next interview. Now, this guy has not only done this, but he's also taken his business all the way up to a quarter of a million a month. And guess what? He's got a full-time job as well. Stay tuned. I think you're going to love this one. Pete, thank you so much for joining me. Give us a quick rundown. Where are you right now? And then we'll go through the journey in a bit. Thanks for having me, Tom. I appreciate you know the invite. Right now, we're doing like six figures a month pretty consistently. The last like year, started kind of taking things more seriously last May. Got into a mentorship group, met some folks that I you know was in group chats with and, and sharing information with. We went to like 50K, 60K, 130K in three, four months. So last May, you started doing this. Talk me through revenue numbers. Go me through that. Yeah. So, I mean, roughly, I think it was like May was probably 13K. There was some like, you know, odds and ends that I was flipping, like Legos and vinyls and, and that sort of thing. And some of the things that I was just learning with, like some buys that I did. And then so it was like 13 to 25 to 60 in three months. And then in August, I did 130. You peaked at what's the highest you've ever done in a month? 280, 290, somewhere in there. Do you have like a whole team of sourcing VAs doing this all for you? No, we have no sourcing VAs. I just have a good group of folks that we share leads and we share opportunities. And that's really kind of what the whole back end looks like. Uh, we have an admin VA and she's awesome. But th that's really it. Just a, a handful of guys that are always talking about Amazon is really all it took to kind of inspire that growth. You have a job as well. Is that right? Yeah. And is it like a part time job that you don't have to worry? Or is it something, you know, is it a bit more intense than that? Uh, no, I mean, it's it's a corporate job, 40 hours a week, remote. The remote's super helpful, to be honest. Like being able to carve out the not commuting allows me to kind of handle both. Did well in my performance reviews at work. So everything's good. <laughs> Obviously, if anyone doesn't know, you're not like, a single guy who's just like all he does is works and then does Amazon you're actually married as well aren't you yeah so we got Jamie and then the two dogs so it's a lot I suppose but really all comes back to that group and like if one person in that group is learning something they're sharing that with me so that I don't have to go learn it so you just have that compounding effect over time and you're not working as hard because you have other people that are kind of alongside you learning you save tons of time that way Absolutely. Love it. So I want to kind of break this down into two parts. One, I want to talk about your journey and specifically around the group, because that sounds like a very key area that you've done. And then number two, I'd like to talk about mindset and how to find a group. Let's jump back into your journey, first of all. So you kind of keep coming back to this group. What does that mean? Define it, you know, explain it. Obviously, I know I've met you. I've seen the group. Like, it's amazing with <laughs> the results. Hence why you're here. Right around May, I joined Miles, Flips for Miles mentorship program. I think that's an important component. Because when you have a bunch of people that are showing commitment, you then are amongst people that probably are going to stick to something. Meeting those guys, you didn't have to go look for, you know, random people on social media to like talk about Amazon with. You had them and you kind of had a feeling that the commitment would stick around I and mean, it has. You know, there's a little bit of like a brotherhood that kind of forms as you, you get to know each other. I think that folks that try and do this by themselves are really doing themselves a disservice because there are so many things to learn in the space of Amazon. Doing it by yourself is miserable, to be perfectly honest. Like it is not not fun. But if you do it with other people, especially the, that initial learning curve, it's a lot more fun. You enjoy it. I mean, and that's something that, that Miles preaches all the time on all social media platforms. And he's right. So yeah, I kind of got lucky there. So talk me through like, so this group that you're part of, like, what are the dynamics? Is it like you guys just have a, like a WhatsApp or like a Discord that you just chat on? How does that group kind of work? Tell me about it. I want to hear about it. Right now, it's mostly iPhone messages, like iMessages all day, like just back and forth. Most of the time it's at this point, because there's like a base understanding of everything now. There's not a lot of talk about Amazon. Like it's 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 less about Amazon than it was as we were learning. But now it's just, you know, jokes, just, you know, having a good time with each other. A lot of FaceTime calls. I think that's like a, a good way to kind of vet out someone's seriousness is if they're willing to pick up a FaceTime call that's unprompted. Occasionally we'll hop on like Zoom and if there's like big sales and such and we'll source them together. Tell me about what was it like when you first started that kind of group. And by the way, I'm going to just ask because someone's going to be asking this question. If I join Miles's community right now, can I get in this group? Group. Is that like a yes or like, is that a no? But as in like your group, the one you're in? When you look at how groups form, so in Miles' community, he tries to kind of lump folks together based on who he thinks are going to like mesh and be friend friendly and like kind of create good outcomes, right? He, he tries to kind of move the chess pieces, right? But what, what I think that you see with groups is... If you look at the group that you start with, there's going to be a varying level of ambition within that group and the groups evolve and then they maybe splinter and then reform. What I saw to be the like most attractive folks to have in a group would be somebody that would go to a conference. So if you're going to a conference, you're showing this extraordinary effort that most people are not going to do. And so we had an initial group. Some of those folks kind of went and met 
other folks within the Amazon community at conferences. And then new group, a new group formed. And that has been the group we've been, I think we met at ASD in August. Mm-hmm. And that group has been like very tight knit for a very long time. Like, and I don't, I don't see that changing. If I ask this, because I, I've had this a thousand times, because I, I agree with you. I think the, the groups, you know, basically it's like a mastermind. It's like a network. It's a very tight cohort. People are going to be like, I want to join that group. Can they join your group? And I'm guessing the answer is probably no, because it's that close form, isn't it? No, not because we're just trying to be mean. But like, if you look at when you find that group of people and you see things going well, you have to really look at what adding somebody new would do to that dynamic. And so I think that if the dynamic is good, regardless of kind of who's out there and trying to be like included, it's kind of like, do you have to evaluate kind of how is that going to change the dynamic? Are people going to be comfortable in the same, like when you have that tight knit of like a a group of folks, you kind of have to just be very cautious about that. So I know that there's a ton of other really good groups within Miles's community. How yeah. big is the group? Your little group? Like six. six I, think guys, I think it's like when you get the small groups, you just start connecting. It all kind of works. You then become very protective over it because you realize that adding people, everyone has to add value, don't they? And if someone's not adding value, you're like, why are you in the group? You don't kick people out. You just form another group and then the old group doesn't get talking anymore. I see that so many times. Yeah, I think that's a reality of it because some of the folks that we start started this thing with back in August. I, I don't talk to some of the guys as much. Still really, I like them and they're like friends, but maybe they splintered off and had another interest. And maybe they have gone into another area, another platform, whatever the case may be. And so, yeah, I mean, they, they do, they kind of splinter. They just kind of mature, right? It's just, it's a natural progression in my opinion. And it, I don't think there are any hard feelings. Just talk me through like within, because I appreciate like right now that I'm in a couple of community, like communities, but also as well, some very tight knit groups, which I've found massive benefit in. But like for someone, and I, a lot of Amazon sellers right now are they're getting into the game, they're watching the YouTube videos and they're feeling like, cool, maybe they're struggling a bit, but they're hearing about these groups. Before we talk about getting into it, like what happens within the group? Are you sharing everything, all your deals or are you like holding stuff back? Yeah, little, little A, little B. Like I think that when you initially start a group, I think first there is a feeling out process. If I share, you're going to share back. So you feel out at the very beginning. If you share something that you think is very valuable and they return that, then it's like, okay, we can be open with one another. That matures over time. Now that we have a group of people running six figure like monthly Amazon stores, there are some things that are shared and some things that are not. And like, there are some things that like are two certain opportunities that maybe are too delicate to share. And that's totally understood within the group. And then if there's like a quick hitter, like good sale, that's typically shared. I think that the things I don't share would be the lower ranked items that I don't think would tolerate the volume. And I think that there's an understanding that if I'm only going to go get 10 myself, probably not going to go send that to the group. Then you're just going to be competing down in price and everybody's got four or five months in stock. And like, then it doesn't serve the group. But if there's something that I think can tolerate the number of sellers, on it, then it's like, here you go. Now, if you're struggling to find profitable products, what's one thing I can recommend for you? Check out the Fast Track FBA lead service. It's a service I created whereby we've got a team of VA sourcing in the USA and the UK Monday to Friday. They're finding lots of profitable deals. You can come in, you can review them all, and you can buy tokens and exchange only the tokens that you want for those deals that work for you. If you do not like the leads, you do not pay for it. It does not matter. Now, not only this, my top tip for you to add to that as well is use our lead service to find new suppliers you did not know about and then go and find other profitable products from those suppliers. It helps you expand your supplier database and get profitable products today. Check it out. I'll drop a link to the Fast Track FBA lead service down below. Zero, 100,000, four months. The key reason behind this is not some sourcing software, not an army of VAs, not like, I don't know, daddy's credit card or something. I have no idea. But the idea that you're saying is that having a very small group of people that share information has allowed you to achieve that. We're talking quarter of a million, basically, as well, that you have managed to achieve, which is absolutely incredible. I, honestly, it blows my mind. If I'm watching this right now as a new seller, I'm just going to call BS because I'm like, <laughs> I don't yeah. understand how six of you can find enough deals that you can get to quarter of a million, period. Explain that to me. I mean, we, we were getting on Zoom calls every night for months, struggling, not being very good at Amazon at all. And so each time one person makes a mistake or does something, there's like a correction on it throughout the whole group. And so you just compound very quickly. And then you carve out like best practices. You understand kind of how to get the quantity of product that you need. I I look at kind of who I was prior to being out there on social media. And I think that the person that I was prior to putting up talking on video and stuff, 
would have also called BS. <laughs> it would have been like, let me see the profit. That's a, that's a common thing that you see on social media or whatever the case may be. But yeah, I, I think that you really don't understand your potential until you're around other people that are kind of pulling it out of you. You mentioned like improving the quality, getting the orders through. And I'm guessing you're talking about orders cancellations. Is that what we're talking about? And you're saying improving quality? Is that like deal analysis? Like what, does that, what do you mean? Be very specific for people who maybe don't understand what you're talking about. How have you grown? Yeah. So I think absolutely deal analysis. I think that's huge. I think that sending a lead to the guys and them telling you that it's not good is like, if you do that, and especially when you're starting, you get really good feedback on it very quickly. Right. And so that forces you to improve. So that is one component of it. I do think that the order cancels piece is huge because if you're multi-threading the opportunities that you have to figure out how to get around order cancels, your surface area of luck is humongous. Whereas if I'm just going in there, I'm getting the cancel. I have nobody to compare notes with. And so maybe they figured it out and they could say, I, I just dealt with this last week. Like I was talking to uh, Steven at Steven Does Business. I was like, I can't get anything through. He's like this, 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 and this. And then eventually I was just get, I got thousands of units through. So he'd gone through that and it was a 15 minute phone call of him saying, of his sharing his, his experience. And then it was game over. So like, the, I think the normal seller, if they didn't have a group would give up and it was tempting, but and, and understandable because it, it, sometimes these websites are complicated. It's a real challenge when you know, like, it's such a good deal if I could just figure out how to buy more. And it's like, if you spend half an hour trying to figure it out, that's okay. But if there's six of you spending half an hour, that's now like three man hours worth of work. And you're like, I would never spend three hours. I'll get pissed off by that point. Whereas the three of you doing half an hour each is easy. Right. A hundred percent. And you can check the tapes. Like I was tweeting about how order cancels are actually great because they actually are remote. Getting around order cancels is a skill at the end of the day. If you can do it, you can get tons of product and other people won't be able to get it. So it's, it's a huge component of this whole game. So you touched on something then, which I don't think people really understand. Everyone, when they're starting out, complains about order cancellations, but you use the word a moat. What do you mean by that? And why is it important? And it's massively important, but why? A moat is something that protects your product from getting into everybody's hands, I guess would be a way, it's like a barrier to entry. And so what I've learned over the last 12 months is that any barrier to entry is a beautiful thing. Because moat, like 90 to 95% of people, when there's a difficulty or a problem to solve, they'll give up. And so if you can find those, if you can find a problem and then go solve it, you're going to make a lot of money doing that. You're rewarded for it. So whether it's order cancels or going and looking for out of stock ASINs on Amazon and then bringing those listings back to life, great opportunity. If you can go solve that problem, you will make more money than if you just kind of go where everybody else is going. The easy stuff, which is like the nice flat lines on sale, which it always does bad because everyone's buying that. That's the obvious ones. The amount of times when I'm trading VAs, the new seller count's going through the roof and I'm like, do not buy it. And they're like, sir, it's profitable. I'm like, just wait, it's going to do the crash. And obviously they eventually learn, but you know, that's a really common mistake. And again, these moats give you the competitive advantage, which not only allows you to scale, but also massively increases your profitability. And once you figure out that, how I get the orders through, you now have something that no one else can do. And so therefore you can use that supplier that everyone else can't, which is like fantastic. You talk about scaling your business 100,000 and I'll like and a quarter of a million and it's really about sharing around this group sharing everything sharing all your learnings sharing deals which can support all the sellers within that in that small mastermind what about your mindset how have you changed over that time tell me about that like you said that the group changed who you are as a person what does that mean I've learned that the majority of the time, your life will be dictated by the information that you have available to you. If you're surrounding yourself with people that make you uncomfortable, that are maybe doing more, that information will flow down and that can unlock tons of potential. I think if you go through life with this very guarded, narrow point of view, you're missing out on all of this opportunity that's right in front of you. Maybe a year, year and a half ago, I was totally that person. Now being around people that kind of have a bigger vision, I see things completely differently than I used to. That's one. And then I think that taking extreme responsibility for everything that you do, everything in your life, every single thing comes down to you because you're the only input that you have control over. And so you have to figure out why things did not go well because of you. And so those two things, I think, were big things that changed for me. I'd always like had a level of like responsibility, but I think that it got more aggressive over the last like year. I, like I'll take more accountability for, for things that 
have take place now. Like I, I know everything comes down to me. Uh, I think it's a Buddhist saying, you are that to which you are most exposed to. And so it's like, if you just expose yourself to this and nothing else, you will become a great Amazon seller because that's all you're exposed to. So I love that one. And then the other one, your second point, which is, I think it's Jacko Wilkinson uh, or Jacko Wilco, I forgot his last name. He's like extreme ownership. So as in, if you got hit by a drunk driver in a, in a car crash and you were parked not doing anything, it's your fault. And it's like really extreme ownership. And it's like, wow, like that's a really like, I have control over my life and the decisions I make. Everyone wants to know, now that you've been through the group, if you had to go and start a group again, or someone's asking you, how do I join one of these groups? I want to be doing quarter of a million. I want to be doing 100,000 in the next four months. What are the steps you would recommend doing to getting this small mastermind together? I think that a lot of people will say that, that they want these things. It's very easy to say. You have to actually do it. Like you have to really need it. And so... What I learned over the last year is that you will reach your potential when you put your back against a wall. And so that could be different for other people. It's totally relative to your current situation. For me, going and doing mentorship was something I was extremely uncomfortable with at the time. Nothing like a, just a topic, right? But then when you do mentorship, there's a level of like, I'm in this. <laughs> like, I cannot let this go poorly. And then you then cross these milestones as somebody pushes you through those limiting beliefs. And then you you just continuously get uncomfortable to the point where now I remember in June, I posted a video about how I spent $20,000 in a day. And then in December, I spent like $120,000 a day. And it was just like, oh, okay. You have to put yourself against a wall and just continuously moving where that wall is. And you can do it at your own pace. But if you wanted to scale to that quickly, you got it. You kind of have to do it quick. What specific tactical things can people do to maybe find a group or create their own group? So I think posting videos on whatever, like social, like Twitter, I think is a really good spot to meet people just because there's like a timeline and you can ever, it's more communal than I would th I say, I would think Instagram is. So putting videos on Twitter, it also catches people off guard because like videos are not super common on Twitter. They'll be more like likely to, to interact and be positive. One thing that I've kind of thought about is that there's a reason for country clubs, like pay, getting behind a paywall will expose you to people that are serious. I mean, at the end of the day, like I'm not shoving anything down your throat but it, there's a there's a reason why they exist and why the folks that I met behind a paywall happened to be really, really good and committed because they were also in the same situation where they had just committed to something and they followed through. It's like people who are willing to match your level of energy, your ambition and share so much. Yes, we are all competitors, but the game is so big. If you work together, you win so much more of the pie rather than fighting yeah. on your own. Complementary skill sets are very, very important. So you don't want five people that are good at the same thing. You want five people that are like good at different things have strengths and then they all complement each other in a really nice way and i think that helps kind of take things to the next level I completely agree i've had it like they're like we need someone with systems processes and how to hire someone they're like talk to tom i'm like ah i know why you, why you wanted me but but, but then by the way i think it's really important for you to share that on social because that shows what your skill set is and when people need it you are just the guy and then now you get invited i'm sure a lot of people here are a bit scared of scaring on social and like, no, this is why you need to be doing it because you share about who you are. Any of it, quarter of a million, what's going on for you in the next 12 months? I think that the next milestone will be doing like 200K a month consistently. And so I think we need some more some more systems in place. I need to evaluate um, where I'm spending my time and then we just have to go do it. Okay, so if you're struggling to find the profitable products or maybe even the products you are buying are tanking, what do you need? You need to find those profitable suppliers which are working for Amazon sellers. This is why I've put together my top 100 supplier list for the USA and for the UK. And if you look in the description right now, you're going to see a link to that where you can access it for free. Have a look down below. I will definitely interview you in a year's time. If not, come down and meet you in person and obviously kind of get an update on the journey. So I just want to say for myself and everyone who's watching, first things first, well done. Like you had just broken beliefs that people thought were not possible. You've shown that you can do it without VAs and all the sourcing tools, but actually just a group of people working together with great ambition has just like changed the game of how people think about this um and finally thank you for everything that you shared honestly i think it's been you know really eye-opening and changed the way people see about how to actually grow this business so honestly for me and everyone else thank you so much yeah thanks for having me